Yeah, well, Turning Red is is a unique, it's Pixar. Mm -hmm. Talk about another first. It's the first Pixar movie yes. I've seen dealing with menstruation. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there she is, a woman of the hour. Morning. Hey. <sighs> Condolences. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Where's John? I don't know. Welcome back, everyone. Here's a little swag from Dean Larson. Our first lady chair. Woman Well, chair. aren't you going to sit at the head of the table? Chair sits at the head of the table. Thank you, Elliot. I don't mind if I do. Is this green or brown? Let's try this again. It's lovely to see you all. In a couple of minutes, we'll know if that was right. Okay. Welcome to the actor's side. Well, let's see here. Two Golden Globes, four SAG Awards, 12 Emmy nominations. I could go on all day with this. <laughs> this is amazing. Sandra Oh, welcome. Hi, <laughs> it's, it's nice to be reminded of that list. It's like, really? Wow, OK. You did all that. I did all that. <laughs> <laughs> and continue to. I uh, Two series that we're talking about mm -hmm. here this season alone. Uh, the Chair, which is so terrific, on Netflix, which is uh, uh, something you got to see, that you're also an executive producer yes. on, as you are on Killing Eve, yes. which everybody knows about, and has has finished. It's, yes. It's the finale. I can't believe it. Like, the finale just happened, and yeah. it's all... It's all, well, spoiler alert, it's all over. It's all over. They know now. Uh, they definitely know now. And what do you think about the end? Well, while we're talking about that, the finale, it was very interesting. Hmm. I mean, if you don't want to know, just yeah, go yeah. like this. But it, it, I thought it was not where I thought it was going to go. Tell me, tell me, what did you think? What? I, I thought either both of you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to be her alone. Uh -huh. alone. And then that last shot uh -huh. of you emerging and, you know, just screaming. To yeah. You, it was amazing. You know, I'm so glad you said that. You know what? I got to tell you, honestly, it was going to be the other way around. Yeah. Right. Okay. So it was going to be the other way around. So when I was talking to Laura and Neil, our head writer, that was at the beginning of beginning of 20. So that's probably January of right. 20. Yeah. And we were chatting about how do we want to end this? Blah, 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 blah. I was like, you should, you should kill my character. I think that would be the, I, would th I thought that would be the strongest and the most interesting. And not only that, I felt emotionally it was the right place of where I was at. Oh, because wow. at the end of season three, uh, I just felt like it was starting to get into a kind of like a nihilistic place. Right. And we're like, let's continue that line and let's just go straight into oh. it. And then, of course, the pandemic happened. Yeah. And then somewhere in uh, the summertime, uh, they came to me and they said, we, we can't do it. We need to change it. I, it's like she needs Eve needs to live. We think that yeah. after and during this time, that. I yeah. think that's also as well, because like, you know, Eve is the way into this world. Yeah. She's our every woman. So it's kind of <laughs> like really super depressing if she dies. So so we switched it around. Yeah. And uh, I, Jody was very, very much on board with that. And and then the end um, again, I'm so happy that you said that because that end shot is actually the end shot that I shot. Oh, that's the last thing you did? Yeah, it was tough. Uh, we did all of the tank work. Wow. The very last day, we spent like nine, ten hours in the tank. Oh, my God. And so uh, <laughs> Jody's last shot of when Villanelle is being pulled away was her last shot. Wow. It was very emotional for both of us. And yeah. then that last, uh, when uh, Eve kind of comes up and then she has her kind of... Moment. Yeah, sure. life cry or yeah. whatever you want to call that. It was... That was my last shot. And it was like, as it is, you know, yeah. there's no time, the camera's breaking, <laughs> all that stuff. It's like, all right, um, we think we got it. And um, that's it. And I'm like, uh, okay. So wow. that's how it, um, that's well, how it I, I think it also, it's up to the audience now to chart Eve's future for themselves, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. you know, and unless you're going to do a spinoff, I don't know about, oh, uh, so. no, 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 no. <laughs> which because I think people are rooting for her yeah. to have a nice time going or, forward. Yeah, or a life. You know a life. I mean? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And in the metaphor of it, you know, yeah. it's like when you get what you needed to get out of a relationship. Right. How do you keep moving on? How do you keep moving? Which is perfect because the relationship between them was so intriguing and goes in so many different directions. But they needed each other. Yes. And uh, to come to the places 
yes. uh, where they were. And uh, you know, and you and Jody just phenomenal thank together. You. All that yeah. awards attention oh. was well deserved. Thank you. Thank you. you so are you going to miss it? Are you going to miss that? Are are were you were you ready to move on? You know. It's hard because it's like sometimes I feel like no one really cares about this or really wants. I found that show really hard. Yeah. <clears throat> I found that show really, really hard, very, very challenging to shoot because there's something about the emotional weight of Eve, yeah. of having lost everything. And the way that I just feel like I'm working nowadays is like when you are playing a character who has to grow and change, yeah. I have just found it... Um, um, like a thing that I, it has to happen in my own body. Right. You know what I mean? So, so the digging deep to go, um, the, uh, the season, uh, episode seven, um, uh, it, it was a very confusing episode for me. And I tried to make it the most, um, existential because mm -hmm. she's asking the questions of like, what is the purpose of life? How right. do I go on? How do I continue on with life? Yeah. Which I think, you know, also, during the pandemic, I, I, as I'm sure we all were, it was very much a, a question that I think that we all had. Yeah. And so I just thought uh, it was hard. It was hard. It was hard to say, I've, she's tried this, she's tried that. How do I continue going on when it seems to me that this world can't change yeah. or that I don't know how to end the 12 or I think that I've ended the 12 and still I, I am feeling... I'm left with these feelings. How do yeah. I go on? Questions that are killing Eve. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man. Well, uh, we'll miss mm. killing Eve, for, to be sure. But uh, The Chair, another show that just sort of popped out of nowhere uh. for me. And uh, I loved it. And, and it's a very significant series, too, because they're mm -hmm. casting you, mm -hmm. uh, a person of color mm -hmm. and a woman, mm -hmm in a role in this university that's mm -hmm. never had that, mm -hmm. and now you're suddenly the boss, and that's mm -hmm. so great, because mm -hmm. it hasn't happened before. I'm so glad that you said that, because I, lo I love the chair. I love the chair, I love shooting it, and I thought that exactly what you're saying, you know, Amanda Pete, who's our creator and right. executive producer, she, she, she decided, her workplace comedy, Yeah. Uh, where she chose to, chose to set it, which is, a, you know, a university setting. Right. And it is. Like, my character, Jean Yung, Professor Jean Yung Kim, she's the first woman of color to head the, you know, the, the, the English department. You get to talk about a million things without talking about it. Yeah. Without pointing at it, without forcing anything. And in the space of comedy, you have a lot of freedom, I think, to be able to uh, examine certain relationships and spaces um, that I think we absolutely need to do. Oh, totally. You know, and the name right there, Ji Yoon Kim, mm -hmm. is a true Korean name yep. that is there. You know, and people think, oh, okay, that's great. It doesn't always happen. happen. I'm glad that it's happening now. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like it's having to understand that one, that there's now an opening for just understanding that, you know, not everyone has an English speaking name and no. the time that we need to take to to learn it. And that wasn't always the case as I uh, as I've been coming up. Yeah. So I loved it, it was with Parasite too. We all learned yes. Director Bomb. Oh, yeah. You know, you know, yeah, you don't call him his first name. You no. call him Director Bomb. Director Bomb, Bomb <laughs> which I thought was so interesting. Yeah, yeah. He's such a great guy too. Yeah. He's so nice. Yeah. Um, but it was you know, it was fun getting to know him. But uh, you know, the things that are always revelations. Yeah. Um, what was it about this character though re really intrigued you? She's complicated. Everyone around her has their own thing too. I mean the the relationship between you and Bill, who's played by the wonderful J. Duplass, mm -hmm. is not like much on TV. It's very complicated and interesting. I think so, because it's a long-standing friendship. Yeah. It's a complicated kind of romance that's going on. That's for sure. And what <laughs> I loved it is it's also like really looking into two people who are in their midlife, yeah. who are in their, strongly in their mid-career, right? right? And they're starting a romance, yeah. you know, and I got to tell you, Duplass, man, you can kind of go anywhere with that guy <laughs> and he will be there to match and to catch you. And I yeah. we had a really great time working with each other. And and, you know, the mm, the chair, we were shooting it right at the height of covid, oh. I'd say in, in January of 2021 before the, the vaccine. And, you know, many of our castmates um, 
are, we're north of like 65. Yeah, well, you have Holland Taylor, who's yes, wonderful. Yes, Bob Balaban. And so yeah. there was a lot of, um, I would say there was a, an overlying tension and fear right. that everyone had on set and a care that we had. But in some ways, I think that it translated to <laughs> this kind of fear that everyone had over the de English department. Uh, yeah. You know, it really, really, really worked really, really yeah. well. And so it was a, we shot very, very quickly. Um, but I've, it's, it, I've never been on a more um, experienced set. Oh, wow. That's cool. And again, you know, you have Holland, yeah. you have Jay, yeah. you have Amanda, you have um, Bob Balaban, you have David Morse, right. you know what I mean? Wow. others, yeah. right? So you have so many people who have so much skill and so much time in both film and television coming in. And I think that's yeah. why, in a lot of ways, it worked because we did not have time to establish relationships. Yeah. So you had to already, it was great to already have a fellow player who can figure out how to establish a relationship quickly. And I think that's what we tried to do. That's interesting. Well, you've done so much, you know, Siri. Well, obviously you did Grey's Anatomy for like 10 years and Arliss before that. Yes. And, uh, you know, do you like that kind of like jumping into different television series, different kinds of roles like that in this medium of television? Uh, Cause you've done great movies too. Everyone knows sideways. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's an interesting yeah. question because I'll, I'll, I'll start it this way. I have felt welcomed. I found my way. I can't say welcomed because yeah. that's not really true. I have found my way in my career through television because television has been more accepting of me. And that's yeah. saying a lot, meaning yeah. I'm clearly a woman. I'm clearly a woman of color. I have felt, I have not felt n yet, it's not over. I have not yet felt in my career this space for film that has had an opening for me. And so I went where there was work. Mm. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's I like it's like I moved here and I've also had great fortune. Um Arvis was on <laughs> HBO, right. early days of HBO yes, for it was. seven seasons. Yeah. And then I moved to Grey's and that was ten seasons. Oh my God, yeah. And then, you know, Killing Eve was four. So uh you you are going right now, you know, I, I am left Toronto to come and do Arla. So it, you're really trying to just work. Yeah. Right. And while I still have somewhat of a, a theater life and and film life, it was really television that I felt my I, I found my home. Yeah, that's interesting. I find many actors find better material or what they consider more challenging material in television than they do in movies these days. Um, I think now. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I think the material is, uh, I think the material is is richer, and I think also the format of it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I will say, having done it, twenty two episodes of an hour drama is is a real slog. It's <laughs> tough. I think it's tough for the writers. Yeah. I think it's tough creatively. Um, but the storytelling, I think, is some um, interesting and manageable yeah. um, in uh, a much shorter episode um, order. It, you left a huge hit show, mm -hmm. Grey's Anatomy. At the, you could actually still be doing that. I know. That. It's, still going on. it's still going on. It's still going on. It's still going on, and I don't see an end in sight. I <laughs> yeah. mean, yeah. Ellen Pompeo, God bless her. She's yeah, yeah, yeah. Be there. yeah. There. yeah. <laughs> um, why did you decide that was the time to go? You know, I remember we were uh, at the studio, and Shonda. Gosh, it must have been, I must have at the end of maybe even season eight or nine. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to remember what it was. I just remember having this walk and Shonda was, we were just walking and she was like, what do you want to do? I think it was just, I think it must yeah. have just fallen in the time of like um, when you have to renegotiate. Right. So what's the timing of what you want to renegotiate? Uh, and I've always uh, been very respectful and very grateful for my relationship with Shonda yeah. because we were able to have this kind of conversation and she was open to say, what would you like to do? So to be included in that way, I was, I'm always grateful for. And I think it was just all creative. Yeah. All creative. It's like, you know, in the olden days, I'd say you wouldn't want to be <laughs> stuck on a TV show for a long time. Right. It's like, oh, it's not challenging or whatever it is. I don't, I think those, those, th that time of, um, 
a television show going, you know, whatever, 18 seasons now. I don't know if it's going to happen again. But I, but I, I felt I did absolutely all I could creatively in creating this character. Yeah. And in the way that I think that it was an amazing opportunity as an actor and a challenge as an artist, right? right. Is how do you stay in the game, still creating when there are similar situations that repeat over and over again? Mm -hmm. How do you still keep it creative? And you know, like that's some, a big thing that I think that people ask theater actors, yeah. you know, myself, it's like, how do you do the same thing over and over and over again? On it, but it's like, especially on stage, it's just not, it's, it, it doesn't get boring because there's something so special in the liveness about it yeah. that you're constantly in the space of creating creativity and immediacy that for me, it never gets boring. But I did feel when we're coming to that, what would be a 10 years stop, I was like, yeah. I, I, I think I'm done. Well, are you sick of people calling you the first? You're the first, mm. uh, uh, you know, of Asian descent to host Saturday Night Live. Mm. The first of this. Oh, I was not. I was uh, not. That was Lucy. Yeah. Our, our, yeah. You know, then they say the second. And then they say, you know, the first to do the that Golden was Globes. Nora, the, yeah. It was the Golden Globes. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the first to win two Golden mm -hmm. Globes. And mm -hmm. <laughs> the first, you know, I mean, when are we going to stop saying that and, and have just c complete inclusion here where that's not. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll ask you. I'll ask you that <laughs> because you are so deeply in yeah in this, and you know everyone. When do you think that's going to happen? I think it's getting a lot better. Uh -huh. I really do. I think now, you know, um, it's it's a good time. Yeah, but it's not all there yet. Correct. You know. You know. I think it's a. What I feel uh, in that kind of first question, it's it's complicated because. Uh, it has been something that I've carried for a long time in a way that is just complex. Yeah. And it's not even compl complicated, it's complex. I, 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 I take that position with very seriously. Yeah. Because it's super important. Right. It's, it's yeah. like if you find yourself in the space of being the first there, it's like uh, I, I've just taken it very, very seriously. But what... I think in a part of what you're asking is, is mm -hmm. that when we continue asking that question, this being one of these moments, what is the discussion behind that? Right. Really, you know, and again, and so for this, like when I was at the SAG Awards last, the last SAG Awards, for the chair actually, and uh, it was a great success for um, Squid, Squid Game, and they had a table there, yeah. yeah? And then uh, the table behind me was Morning Show, and Greta Lee was there, mm -hmm. and uh, Poppy, Poppy Yu, mm -hmm. who is on, uh, I'm pretty sure that's her name, who's on Hacks. I was sitting in the room, right, yeah. which I have gratefully been in. Yes, many times. And the fact that there were so many Asian actors in there does mean I am not. It's I can be the first, exactly. but there is just what's important is is, is that that the bench is stacked. Yep. You know, and that was the first time that I felt, and again, I've been in this game for a long time, so how have I tracked things really moving? Really only, like, in the past couple of years. Yeah. Like, really. And and again, it's like, whether it, it still continues, like, uh, being in the room, oh my God, when Parasite won. I know. Got, I mean, it was incredible. And then, so to, con again, feel on Asian influence, it's also to see how much our own homegrown Asian American talent continues. Yeah. Because what's so great about the uh, the, the Korean cultural um, uh, influence, it's so yeah. rich. And it's also uh, the Korean cultural influence. Yeah. It's not necessarily the Korean American influence. So something yeah. like the chair yeah. is profoundly Korean American because you see ji Yoon having to navigate, you know, her daughter right. who is not of her same race necessarily, and, yeah. and, and her father, and the, the way that she negotiates language is a profoundly um, immigrant and Korean American um, experience. Well, it's, it's definitely there, and it's in, uh, just before we have to go, animation too. You're in a, a, 
Oh, yeah, Turning beautifully, Red. Beautifully, beautifully oh, yeah, reviewed yeah. movie, uh, Turning Red. Mm. And uh, you were in Raya, The Last Dragon. Yes, yes, You've yes. done so much voiceover work, yeah. my God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you like doing that. I right? love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, Turning Red is is a unique, it's Pixar. Mm -hmm. Talk about another first. It's mm -hmm. the first Pixar movie yes. I've seen dealing with menstruation. <laughs> but, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> definitely, but I always look forward to seeing what you're doing next. And congratulations on the chair and the end of Killing Eve. I know we're gonna hear about uh, a lot about these all season long here. So thank you, Sandra O, oh, for joining us on The Actors. Thank show. you, good to be here.